Hi everybody, Creative Katie here. Welcome to my channel and an art journal tutorial. This is a fun page. Here's the sneak peek. Today, this art journal starts with some collage papers. It's been a while since I've gone back to my old favorites of purples and pinks. And so I deliberately chose to go back to my happy color place with the purples and pinks. And I went into my gel prints and my collage papers and pulled out some papers that just made me happy and were the colors that I wanted. And I thought, I'm just going to put those down. Starting with collage papers like this, sometimes lots of it shows at the end, sometimes very little, but it starts your color story. It gets those creative juices flowing. So I had taped off the coil there, but I took off the tape so that I could glue these down along that straight edge and I'll put it back on so that I don't get any paint or modeling paste or anything in there. I'm gluing down all my collage items with liquid matte medium. This is from Liquitex. I believe it's Liquitex Basics. Now I have this deli paper that I used up some leftover paint and I just stenciled on it and I love how the white areas shine through and I think I'm definitely going to be making a lot more of these kind of collage papers on deli paper using up leftover paint and whatever stencils I happen to have. They can just go into my stash and be used on a page just like this one today. You could also do a stash builder where you just get out a whole bunch of stencils and stencil them on to deli paper and have them at the ready when you want to create. It makes for a quick, easy page for those days when you don't have a lot of time to get going, but you want to create. I'm just layering these up, building my color story. Loving how these colors are playing together. Now I'm adding some Peacock Feather Stamp, and I'll put a link to the stencils that I used as well as the stamps in the description box below if you want to go check them out. If you shop through my Amazon links, just know that I do get a small commission, but it does not cost you more. And I'm stamping with black acrylic paint. I'm putting my stamp in black acrylic paint and then washing the stamp afterwards. Not too, too worried if I don't get a perfect, perfect stamp. I just want some interest in the background. And I love that feather stamp because even though it doesn't necessarily going to read like a peacock feather, I love the stamp. This Harlequin stamp is also adding some more detail to that background, filling in some of that white space. I always am challenged by white space. I like it, but I want to fill everything up. Just edging the page, primarily right now because I don't know what to do, and this just gives me thinking time and gives me a better pic picture of what it looks like at the end. Not happy with the white space. I come in with some deep violet and maybe some of that blue that I had in those collage papers. And at this point, I was quite happy. There, I'm adding a little bit of blue, just bringing in what was in the back, what was in those collage papers into this. Now, I grabbed this stencil. It's called Butterfly Collage. And this element up here, these two circles, and I'm just stenciling with white acrylic paint. And I'm thinking that these were bubbles and I was, wasn't was sure what kind of focal image I was have, but I grabbed something that was on my desk, a dragonfly, and I'm placing it where I think I might want to put the focal image just for the location of these bubbles. Now I've got a bigger dragonfly, but it almost seemed a little bit too big for the page. But I do like this looking right now, the bubbles look really great behind that dragonfly. So you may see me come and do another page and where I'm actually going to do that. I'm removing some of that stenciling because it's interfering with my focal image. 
Now I just want a little bit more detail, so I've grabbed this dot stamp. Again, link will be in the description box. It's one of my favorite stamps. I use it an awful lot for adding a little fine detail. And I'm absolutely thrilled with the background that I have. Still undecided about the focal image. I let this background sit for a while and I just went outside. And I noticed my roses are blooming, and I saw this trio of roses. So when I came back in, I decided I'm going to do some finger painted flowers, and I'm going to make some roses on here. And I've got the quinacridone magenta, which is in the background, and white gesso. And I basically glob it on my fingers, and I'm kind of making commas very loosely don't overthink this however the paint comes out that's how the shading works you could also do this on a side piece of paper and cut it out and collage the item down if you're happy with it so if you're too scared to put because you're going to wreck your background, you can do it that way. So I grabbed the sentiment, all things grow with love, moving it around, playing with orientation. And then I decide I'm going to put the sentiment at the bottom. So it looks almost like it's the vase for these roses. And believing that you need three, it seems more appealing to the eye. I'm painting another couple roses just like my inspirational photo. But as I'm watching this, I'm thinking one big rose might have been that. So I'm going to try a really huge rose at some point in time and see if I like it. Now I'm painting in the stems just with black acrylic paint and I thin it down just a smidge leading to that vase. I'm not sure that's necessary. I have some stamps and these are leaf stamp. So I'm just adding that detail. But you could freehand that as well. And giving that a dry before I move on to the next stage. Now, on the bottom left, you see some collage items. This is with black modeling paste through a stencil. And this swirl is from the Dash V stencil with the black modeling paste. And I'm cutting elements of that out. This is something I've been playing with and I have it in my stash. And it's so great because you can cut them apart, use whatever parts you want. They're easy to collage. The tissue paper fades away and you can audition it exactly where you want it without fear of wrecking your page. So you can try it. If it works, you glue it down. If it doesn't work, you just take it off. And I just wanted to add a little bit of design element here, a little swirl at the bottom. Again, this was all about using things that were in my stash, the sentiment, the collage pages. Gluing down the sentiment again with the liquid matte medium. I like the bold font, the black and the white. Now I grabbed my angle brush and I am adding a little bit more color to these roses, bringing up. Now there's highly textured areas because I used gesso and I globbed it on basically. So it's very texturized. So I'm just playing with that and adding a little more interest and detail. I do at the end use my black. Uh, Pigma pen and add some black lines as well and that did not happen over on film but you'll notice it in the final photos at the end 
And again, whether you add this step or whether you add the black lines is up to you. It's personal preference. And I'm shading around the outside with black acrylic paint and my floating acrylic technique. Just adding those fine details. If you don't follow me on Instagram, please go over to Instagram and follow me at Creative Katie. You'll see sneak peeks and sometimes there's things that I that don't make a video. Now I was going to put a small butterfly on the sentiment and then I grabbed this large one and put it on the middle, and I really liked that look. It was something unexpected, and so I changed my plan. Would you have preferred the small butterfly on the sentiment, or do you like the large one in the middle? Here are some close-ups of the finished project. Now grab some gel prints and start a page.